we know a lot about, or we're growing our, our knowledge about the effects of meditation, long-term meditation in um, people like monks that meditate for 50 or you know, 50,000 hours in their lifetime. And we know that this completely changes the electrophysiological responses of their brains. They have much higher levels of what we call gamma waves, which is a particular frequency of wave. Not only that, but even their resting baseline, even when they're not meditating, their wave, um, their brain waves are more like meditation, uh, the meditation uh, um, kind of brain waves than, than novice people that have, don't have any um, experience meditating. So it really changes both the baseline level of physiological activity as well as the um, response when you're asked to actually meditate. There are kind of two categories of studies that have been done on meditation. One on these um, lifelong meditators, the monks, and the others, on, the other category of studies on people like you and me that that started out with no meditation experience and started to meditate. And those perhaps are more relevant studies for, for most people. And those studies have shown significant improvements in um, attention functions with, with increased exercise and also actual anatomical changes in the brain with um, perhaps a little bit more experience with meditation, maybe five years of meditation experience, um, increase the size of white matter bundles in the prefrontal cortex. So there are you know, substantial physiological anatomical changes that have been shown with, um, with meditation. And um, um, uh, there's also effects on um, depressive symptoms. So decreases uh, of depressive symptoms, decreases in stress um, symptoms. So meditation is doing lots of positive things in uh, some very, very similar to exercise and some slightly different. So I think there's, there's definitely going to be a difference, but there's um, overlapping positive functions that exercise and meditation have on, on your general brain health. How do you get to be a regular meditator? And the answer is, I think, start very, very small. Um, I know for myself, I have a subchapter in my book called um, Confessions of a Yo-Yo Meditator because I think I have tried all different kinds of meditation. Um, and my big mistake early on was to try and meditate for too long at, at, a, at a sitting. So I would try and meditate for 20, 25 minutes with no meditation experience. And it, it was a disaster. I, I forced myself to do it for 30 days thinking that that would be it and I would form my habit. And day 31, I took a little break and I never came back. But then when I came back again, starting very, very small with things that, that you know, I can just do on my own, just breathing meditation, focusing on the breath, something that we all do in, at the end of yoga classes. That's what really kind of helped me build my muscle. And I just have to stick with that very short meditation and build it up that way. And I think people too often either start too long or don't stick with it enough. But again, shorter is better. And I think that, that is a, uh, that's a key for, for people that want to start to meditate.